Hello, it's Alexander Quinn, Starseed Navigating the Light. And today I'm going to do my best to try and break down the disparate, the disparate parts that are all making a whole in terms of the spiritual, metaphysical and scientific elements that make up the title of this video. Because meta being Greek, so metaphysics beyond physics, science and spirituality are all actually incrementally the same depending on where you are in linear time. They are not separate. So I'm going to take something seemingly quite complicated and try to use an analogy to explain it in a way that's very simple so that we can understand what is going on at this moment in time. And in order to do that, I need to break down the elements before we go into how they work. So let's let's provide the what before we go into the why. And the what is, is specifically within four elements. So in much the same way that you have a brain that has different parts that are working mechanisms, if you want, your consciousness has different parts of itself. So you have a light body, which is very, very difficult to see. At best, most people can only feel it at, at times. Then you have a mental body, a physical body and an emotional body. Now, all of these things are one and the same, but you can break them down in order to go into resolve an issue or seek clarification on something, if need be. Now, when I'm working on a client, I specialize in going to, into the light body. I will go in there and I will see what's happening. And all of these different parts within your consciousness are having an effect on how you feel and how you operate. In much the same way, the emotional body will have an effect on the physical body. So, for example, stress will create a, a, a symphony of hormones or stress or, uh, chemicals that go into the bloodstream that can affect the physical, the, the physiological state, sometimes negatively, if it's over a long period of time. In much the same way, the light body also affects the physical and emotional body. But it's very hard to see unless your third eye is open and you've been trained how to go in there. In much the same way that when I'm sat across from a client and I'm profiling their energy body and their light body, and I go into their, for example, their throat meridian, and I can see that it's been closed down for the last 20 years, I can then usually take an educated guess and say that there's probably very high probability that you're having throat issues or you've got thyroid problems. And usually eight to nine out of, time, and at, out of 10 times, I get that confirmation. So you can actually be incredibly exact with what's going on in the light body, even though it's something that a lot of people are not able to see and then feel at the best. So now we understand the basis of what is making up your consciousness. We have these four bodies with one of them that is seemingly invisible, invisible, but is yet there all the time and is working all the time. Now, let's just bank that piece of information and move on to the next thing. We will be coming back onto that. We have been working through a very dense period of humanity's evolution, shall we say. We have been working through a consciousness rewiring and we are and, and what are wires what do wires carry they carry electricity and we are having a, an electrical rewiring at this moment in time because of the energy there is energy pouring and surging through us and because of this what people call in the spiritual community veering away from the science just for a moment people call it ascension and ascension is something in previous Earth history that an ascended master would do. They die and they came back and they ascended. Whilst we are doing it within the body at the same time alive. Now, taking into consideration that we are going through an incredible energetic peak at this moment in time in terms of cosmic and sun solar weather. So at this moment in time, the gravitational fields and the electromagnetic fields of Earth, which are usually having an effect within the ionosphere, approximately from here to about 30 meters above us, are radically changing. Now, your body runs on electrochemical impulses. 
So you are, you could say, an electrical battery in, in a biological chemical body because the synapse runs on electrical impulses. So if you have electrical chemical components running through your body and the gravitational field of Earth, or what people call the veil, is going down, and what charges that is the electromagnetics of Earth based upon the starting point, which is the Schumann resonance originally recorded at 7.83, which is now peaking well beyond that, then it's going to have an effect on the chemical, biological, and electrical components of your body and how they assimilate together, but also at an atomic level, on a DNA level. Okay, let's continue. So taking into account that a people in the spiritual community could talk about these things called light codes, yeah? It sounds a bit woo-woo, but it's not. It can be scientifically proven. Because as the energy of the sun changes, and we know the energy of the sun is changing because we, we're hitting that, that peak now. Right from now until towards the end of October, and there's going to be a very, very intense period, 12-month period now, that's going to affect you at a, at a physiological level, but it's also going to affect the other bodies as well that I mentioned earlier on in this video and your light body. So the Earth's heliosphere is changing. It, it, is it, it is emitting more into the ionosphere and it is changing our chemistry on an electrical level, but it is also changing the ionosphere and what people call the Schumann resonance, which has an effect on your blood pressure and your, cardiovas card your cardiovascular system and a few other things as well, the adrenal system. So moving forward, the sun is also changing its energy. It's a whiter color than it used to be. And the sun's heliosphere is also changing. It is it, it, because it, its gravitational field is changing. It is also uh, allowing more cosmic energy to come in, which the sun actually protected Earth against previously. So Earth's energy field within its ionosphere of negatively and charged positive ions, and ions are, is very, very important because ionic radiation is part of what I'm going to be discussing today because it affects you on a DNA level, hence why people might talk about in the spiritual community DNA upgrades, which we can see pervade through the physiological body as what people generalize as ascension symptoms. So these codes coming from the sun and then more vastly out into space because the sun's heliosphere is changing, allowing more cosmic back, back gamma rays to come in, allowing more of our cosmic self to switch on at a DNA level because seemingly we have 98% of junk DNA, which is now becoming ionized through radiation which is through our sun and cosmically so we are being electrically rewired at an atomic and cellular level now if you go back to the title of this video it is called why are humans going to be more tired in 2024 than most other years if you take into account that we are now being bombarded positively by more energy background radiation from our sun and from the known universe, it is going to have an effect on a DNA level. And as we reach the peak of the sun activity, as I say, pretty much right from now, going all the way until October, it's going to have a cellular effect on the body and rewiring takes a huge amount of energy. Now, when the sun hits, when sun codes or light codes from the sun and also background information hit the skin, the skin turns it into a hormone. It takes that informational light energy and turns it into a hormone. And I'm going to put the name of that hormone here. In much the same way that fiber optics will carry light information, but when it hits your laptop, it's, a, it's an email or whatever, yeah? So we know about light codes, scientifically or spirituality or spiritually. Depending on what part of the linear time-space continuum you are in terms of your perceptual overview. But they are all the same. It doesn't really matter. 
So going forward, now that we have all this information, I want to now give you an analogy to help you understand how this is actually going to be working and what we need to think about over the next 12 months, because it's going to be really, really important. So going back to what I said, that we have these bodies, we have the emotional body, we have the physical body, we have the mental body, and we have the light body, which at best people can sometimes only feel, but unless you've been trained, you won't know how to go in there and actually see it, especially if your third eye is closed. So we've been working in an inverted matrix ascension sim system, if you want to call it that, where energy has been incredibly dense for a very long period of time. And we have not stood in our, what people would call outside of the science, but the spirituality are not in our divinity because we are brothers and sisters from the stars and we are not alone. Now, within the construct of our spirituality, our paradigms, specifically within Earth, and specifically within a, a subatomic level relational to DNA, work in constructs related to the number 12. That is our encoding. Although if you go to other places in the galaxy and other encodings, there are beings that will have 32, 24, and they will work within dimensionalities and densities that are much higher than 12. So that is only relational just to Earth and the physics of Earth. But as you go to other galaxies, those densities um, and those dimensions and the physics will change in other places. So I'm just going to speak about the science and the multidimensionally just of Earth relational to our 12 strand DNA and how that works on a sub atomic level dimensionally as we go through this thing that people call ascension. Stick with me because this is next bit is really, really important. So I'm going to give you an easy to understand analogy so that you can process this. It's not difficult. Here we go. If you could imagine that in an inverted matrix where we have been working through a very sludgy, dark, difficult energy where the veil has been very high or what we can actually call a Jew a duo system, with, uh, which is actually the gravitational field and the electromagnetic system of Earth, which is also relational to what people call time travel. Time has been very slow. It's been very sticky. And this has been affecting our codes. So where previously, let's say oil is actually less dense than water. So it, it, normally what would happen is when you pour oil on top of water, oil is less dense, although it seems thicker and more dense, it's actually less dense because of oxygen um, uh, and helium atoms. So oil will sit on top of water. But in an inverted matrix, when we're not in our divinity, what's been happening is oil has not been sat on top of water floating on top, it has been trapped underneath. Everything has been inverted and the water has been sat on top. So if you can imagine you get olive oil and you pour the olive oil on top, the olive oil more likely, especially when you get oil spills in the North Sea because BP and Shell have released oil, that it sits on top. But in an inverted matrix, the water was sitting on top. And what is happening now is because we are getting these huge electrical rewiring relational to the heliosphere of Earth and the Sun. So we are getting electrical codes that are coming in and this dense energy, or shall I say the analogy of the oil, which should have always been sat on top of the water, is now filtering its way up through the water because it wants to sit on top. So effectively the density within us that was always there is now working its way through up and the density wants to sit on top the oil so that it can come up for dismissal. So you're going to see this in the emotional body. You're going to see this in the physical body. You're going to see this in the mental body. You're going to see this in the light body. So as more of that oil wants to work its way up through the water or density seemingly rising because of the encoding coming up 
because of the, the energies coming in through our sun and background radiation, which is part of our awakening or quickening process, the body is having to go through a major reshuffle at, at a cellular level. So it's going to, it's going to call you to, to want to rest a lot. It's going to have an effect on your body. It's also going to make you, it's, uh, recuperation times are going to take longer. But it's going to have an effect, a slight effect, because background radiation um, and solar weather also have been proven through academic studies and peer-reviewed peer papers to have an effect on blood pressure and cardiovascular health. So more than ever, you're going to want to take extra, extra um, care of the body for the next 12 months. Now, as a quickening spiritual point of view, you could take it that actually what it's saying is that we're about to go into the golden era now. This is the last throes of the reconstructing years. And especially if you've read my book, I talked about this going from 20 to 24 with the major reconstructing years. 2020 and 2024 were the last really major reconstructing years before we went into what people in the spiritual community or the Hopi Indians or the Mayans articulated as and recorded as the golden era or the ascension times of, of, of Earth, so on and so forth. So going back to this oil, coming back up, going into its original divine encodings from an inverted matrix coming up through the water, it's going to be shaky and turbulent as it's trying to come up and get the density come up and get to the top for dismissal. Because density is always like that. There are certain rules to the universe, well, certainly to Earth. Density has to be seen to be dismissed. It has to be acknowledged. So I've said that you have four bodies. So in the physical body, whereas that density comes up, you're going to get aches and pains. I'm going to go through more of what people generalize as the ascension symptoms in a minute. Number two, the mental body. You're going to start working through loops. It could be childhood things, things you've not worked through, things that you have not been ready to dismiss. And they're going to come up. Uh, through your shadow it's called shadow work and it's going to come up and it's going to ask you to dismiss them but if but if the energy is too much for you because you're not grounding it down and taking it down into into the gaia grids and bring it through your body your mental body is going to overload and take you into anxiety and you're going to loop and you're going to create fear loops what's going to happen with your emotional body is it's going to amplify your emotional body so that the highs will be higher and the lows will be lower. But this is positive. This is positive, yeah? Don't freak out on me just yet. It's positive. You need to go through this. It's a quickening process. The lobster has to shed off its, its, its shell so it can grow. Uh, same, same for a snake, same for lots of other animals. Now we get to the light body. Is going to amplify and exacerbate the openings, but also the blockages and the deficits in your light body, which, as I, which as I um, explained, um, explained or, or uh, displayed, will have an effect also on the emotional, mental, and physical bodies. Because what happens in the light body also affects the rest of you, even though they are all one and the same. So there will be an invisible part of you, depending on where your blocks and deficits are within your light body, that will also seemingly encourage things within those other bodies, a density or the oil, to come up that will get you to experience it, although it may feel or seemingly be experienced as something negative, because the ego personalizes everything. To come up for dismissal that you will feel within those other parts of yourself as it's being exacerbated because of these energies coming in. And that is why what the spiritual community will deem as ascension symptoms will be at their pinnacle, will be at their peak for the next 12 months. And it's really, really important to understand that as that oil is coming to the surface, is coming to sit on top of the water for dismissal, there can be friction at a cellular level. And if the friction is too much within the mental body, 
within the physical body, the emotional body, the light body. It can affect a part of that, that self, a part of your consciousness, to have an unwanted response. So, for example, within the physiological body, it will happen at a DNA level if the hypertension or the stress is too much while the density is coming up and out. And it will take the body from ease to not being in ease. And when you are not in ease, you are in dis of ease. And at the worst case scenario, it's not going to happen to everyone, but in the worst case scenario, if your body is in very bad shape, relational to one of your bodies that I have explained, it's going to put you in dis of ease, which is disease. So it's really important over the next 12 months to really take special care of all of your bodies and make sure that you're enacting all of them and as one of the, and, and the same. And if you don't know how to work through the light body, go and see a, 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 a quantum healer and get an MOT or you, for example, you'll get your car serviced. But very, very few people ever in their lifetime have ever had their light body serviced and yet still there it sits. Because you have a soul, you have a light body, you have an auric field, you have a toroidal field, you have all these things. So now I'm going to, now that I have, shall we say, examined and explained the, the what is going on and partly why it's going on, I want to explain, it's, now is a really important time that if you are able to then work through your other three bodies that you can easily more diagnose, that you want to go into your light body because as more of this energy coming is coming in, your light body is going to become more integrated with your physical body. And the two are going to become more intertwined, having more of a, a symbiotic relationship. So now more than ever, as what people call your higher self, as starts to come in, it's going to affect the physical more. So going forward... What are these ascension symptoms and what, are, what is more of this thing that we're going to experience? And just on a side note, a quick fun note, I, I, I want to just say, like, I was talking about the oil going through the water, yeah? Well, let's look at this at a scientific point of view with Jesus walking on water. Jesus was a, well, he was actually a, a seventh density being within a physical body. So if you can imagine Jesus or Sananda or Yeshua, whatever name you want to put on it, it doesn't matter. I just want to talk about the characteristics of what his cellular makeup were at a vibrational level when he was alive on earth. He had a very, very, very high cellular vi vibrational level. So you could say that at, at some aspect, it, as the water is becoming less dense, it sits on top of the oil, sits on top of the water. You could say at an atomic level, Yeshua or Sananda, Jesus, at a, at a cellular level was lighter than water. You could say that's why he could walk on water. Well, at, a, at, a, at a, an atomic level, you could say that's scientific, scientifically correct, although science may not quantumly catch up with that. I lost my higher self now, but for about another five or six hundred years. Now, knowing what I know about quantum physics and quantum science working with the Andromedans and the Mantis, I would believe that Jesus walking, walking on water would be true and correct. But that's just me. So I now want to look at some of the things uh, that are, are, are going on. As this, as this solar radiation continues... Radiation as it's diamondizing your auric field, but as the as this solar radiation is coming in, it's going to it's going to dehydrate you from the inside out, and that is why your body is going to be called for more and more and more water, and you're going to be needing to drink about a bottle, a large bottle, every single day. Now the mitochondria of your system are also going to be working faster. It's going to be, because uh, radiation when working with the mitochondria, the, the cellular level is, is basically spitting out or pooing out more waste products. The mitochondrial DNA is more, value, is more vulnerable 
to ionizing radiation damages than its nuclear counterpart. Ionizing radiation induces nonlinear non -linear and cell type specific damages directly to the mitochondrial DNA, which increases its copy number as a compensatory response to counteract a loss in the mitochondrial function. The mitochondria are especially susceptible to, to, to deficiencies within nutrients, environmental toxins, and oxidative damage. So you're also going to find you're going to need to flush the system more. You're going to have to detox the system more. And some of you will even find that you'll have to urinate more during this time. You might be getting up in the middle of the night and going to the loo or going to the toilet, however you say it, more during this during this time because the radiation as it's coming in is going to dehydrate you from the inside out so it's going to chemically expand your dna so you've got a massive massive cellular upgrade going on now when i ask the andromedans is there something that we need to be taking into consideration something that we might need help from the external bring into our physiological body that will give us a help during this time and their response was this you're going to need a lot more vitamin D. Now, I appreciate that. Well, Alexander Quinn, you just said there's a lot more sun activity coming in. So are we surely not getting more sun in terms of the DNA that's coming in, in terms of the vitamin D? Not quite, because as the radiation come, it comes in, it actually depletes part of your immune system. So your immune system is being, on one hand, slightly attacked by the radiation that's coming in. So you will need more vitamin D paired with vitamin K2, amplified and taken in accordance with magnesium glycinate, so that more of that can come in, boost your immune system, so that is then a vibrational match for the solar radiation coming in, then the vitamin K2 can also work on various components of your body, particularly the calcified parts, which will lessen part of your cardiovascular system and your blood pressure, which will get you through basically the height of, of these symptoms. And the magnesium glycinate specifically can come in to work and help more absorb more of the vitamin D. This is what the Andromedans explained to me. You will need to also uptake, uh, uptake increase in vitamin C. And that's why when these big um, ascension symptoms come in and also the big encodings, you get like, oh, I've got a cold. Oh, now I'm feeling like I've got the flu. When these big energy waves come in or these big CMEs, which are recorded on what is known as the KP index. If you don't know what the KP index, go and have a look. So you can also get the, the proton flux reading. So that's why you that's why you get the fluey cold feeling when the energy is very high. People call it ascension symptoms because it is attacking your immune system. Now, on a spiritual level, it is calling you, urging you, whispering to you to, to be a star being, to be an ascended master, to drop the smoking, to drop the drinking to drop eating donuts for breakfast or no to drop these bad habits because if you want to be an ascended master living on an ascended planet in an ascended energy it's now calling for you to start walking the walk or what is it called is walking the talk talking the walk either way whatever and that's now forcing us into this quickening process so that's why you're going to have those that's those fluey feelings, so on and so forth. So I'm just looking at at, at the notes that I'm that, that I'm, I'm 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 writing down here. Okay, we talked about in my in my video with Linda Linda Good McGillis, Pluto, the, the the energy of Pluto coming in. Yeah, peace, love, unity, truth, oneness, and everything that's not in accordance with that in the energy of Aquarius is going to bring rebellion and change. So if you are an empath. And empaths have a massive habit, especially with the clients that I work with, they have a massive habit of taking on whatever is going on in the collective and sometimes not always disseminating the difference between their own energy 
and what is going on in the collective because they are they are well they're, they're very incredible at understanding what is going on at a global level especially within the grids so empaths out there please be careful what you are disseminating in and through and against what is yours and what is the collective because if you are picking up on everything that is going on in the collective especially this year especially with Pluto going into Aquarius, it is going to burn you out much quicker because it is going to be tiring and exhaustive with all that rebellious energy coming in in order to change systems. So on an empathic emotional level within the collective, the collective, it takes a lot of energy to change systems. So it'll be another reason emotionally and empathically to, to be careful, right? It might be more exhaustive because of everything that's going on, because we are not separate from the collective, we are one and the same, although we have the experience through ego of having what we call a personality, which is all part of our charisma, so on and so forth. So you're also going to notice as this um, energy increases, you're going to get skin issues. Some of you, eczema will increase, um, erratic sleep. Some of you will notice that IBS um, and gastrointestinal issues could increase because there are certain poisons. You know, our food system is so toxic. It's so um, um, loaded with gunk that our body is not going to deal with it anymore going into an ascended energy. So you might find IBS goes up. So you're going to have to change your diet and the body is going to be using more minerals to recalibrate. And because the body is using more minerals to calibrate, some of you are going to find that you're going to get leg and muscle cramps will increase this year. And that is why your cells are using up a lot of energy. And all of this, you're going to get um, more achy joints. Your body want to want to process uh, toxins faster. The next thing is your lungs are also going to feel the change and there are it's almost going to feel like the the air is a little bit lighter this year and there will be times relational to your root remember I said your light body because shallow breathing is related to root issues or where your light body that red ball of energy related to where your tailbone is closed down that's where the shallow breathing begins all sorts of other things but for some of you breathing will be slightly harder this year some of you will also find that the energy going through your light body will exacerbate root issues and this can also have teeth issues this is twofold the first one is it can give you an unstabling um, uh, experience, which shuts down your root, which then creates movement in terms of your teeth. Your light body will affect your teeth. The other thing is, is that as the electrical rewiring is exacerbating everything, emotional release can also come through teeth and you can get tooth pain. So sometimes you can get random tooth pain as this exacerbated energy is coming through, giving you these essential symptoms and it's emotional release that can come up through the, through the teeth. Yeah. So if you go into the body, reset the codes, it'll stop the teeth issues or use a crystal to extract the codes. That's what I personally do. It usually works nine out of 10 times. The other thing is, is that when we go into these very, very high energies, um, for those of you, for those of you that have been um, addicts or have used class A's in your past, you will understand what this, what gurning is. Gurning is when you're you have very very high dopamine or uh, dopamine or serotonin overload in your body, and and, and your body's on overload, and your 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 jaw tends to want to gun, and your jaw is flapping around like a barn door in a storm. Now, when the energies get very, very high, it exacerbates the muscles in our jaw and we are sometimes seemingly gurning a little bit without knowing it and we get a tired jaw. But it also means that in the middle of the night when we're sleeping, it's going to exacerbate tooth grinding. So it's going to wear your teeth down. So just be more cognizant of that and be careful. So watch the body 
and also the light body. Be cognizant of your deficits and your blockages. If you don't know how, go and see a real pro quantum healer. Someone who's got the, someone who really knows what they're doing. Someone who's not guessing. Someone who can actually go in and see your light body. Or call me, get in touch with myself. Or if you can't get hold of me, go and see someone else. Give your light body an MOT because your light body is going to go through some of the, <laughs> the biggest changes that it's gone through in a physical vessel that you've had probably since about 10,000 BC when you were on Atlantis or before. I'm Alexander Quinn, Starseed Navigating the Light, and you're going to be okay. You will get through this. I'm proud of you. Very, very proud of you. I feel almost emotional when I think about the, the, the people that I'm working with and what they're going through and the changes. And the Star families are so proud of you, and you are loved, so loved at this time of transformation. And none of you give yourself enough credit for how far you've come. And I almost feel tearful talking about it. And that'll be linked to, well, your solar plexus area, but also the breathing linked to your, your root but having a deficit. So you'll have to expand on your breathing. And those who are smokers who have been thinking about quitting will probably be forced to now quit this year. Moving forward. So give yourself a, a huge pat on the back for coming this far. And, and you're doing a great job. You are a superstar galactic star being. Do it. I love you. Bye-bye.